All right, welcome back to the uh, video, video tutorial for creating a cinematic and or cutscene in UDK. Uh, once again, this is Grace Blessy. I'm a student at the Guildhall at SMU, and I'm in cohort 15. I'm a level design student, and we are going to be working in UDK version 7748. Today is February 7th, 2011. All right, so in the first video, we dragged a skeletal mesh into the world and gave him a hula hoop animation in matinee, and we basically did that just to have something else interesting to film when we dub our cinematic, and because it's a useful thing to know. Um, but now, we're going to get into the actual uh, filming or cinematic aspect of this. Um, um, in this video, we're going to go over both how to toggle cinematic mode on and how to set up the camera before you are ready to start animating it. So what is cinematic mode? So when you have a cutscene, you need to do more than just have change point of view to the camera because if that's all you do, the player is going to be able to still run around and shoot things and possibly get in the view of the camera and mess up your beautifully crafted cutscene. Uh, you basically you want to make sure that no matter what the player is doing, mashing buttons, they're not going to be able to move their player character or mess anything up or get into trouble or accidentally die because that would be very frustrating for them and for you as the uh, designer of the game. So we need to toggle on cinematic mode because this will solve all our problems for us. So to do that, you want to go up here and click K and go into Kismet. And somewhere near, we've already got most of it here. Let me make this a little bigger. Um, close to our matinee sequence, we're going to right-click, new action, toggle, toggle cinematic mode. Now notice cinematic mode has a number of different properties that you can select or not. Um, I leave most of them on. This is where you just this is where the movement becomes disabled, turning is disabled, hide the HUD, that's very important. Um, a lot of people uncheck hide player. Sometimes our player is not going to be in the cinematic that we're making, but you might have one where they will be or they'll still be standing there and it might be odd if they're magically disappeared just because the camera was moving around. Um, and you just want to be aware that those options are there. Um, and to start cinematic mode, well, we want it to start when our matinee starts. So you simply take whatever it is that's initiating the matinee, which in this case is this touch trigger that the player is going to run into. And here, let me move this up here. Go up ah. Peter's being a little bit slow. OK. Sorry about that. You're going to just click this node, the touch node, and drag. OK. <laughs> drag. I'm trying to get an arrow to come out of it. Being very slow. OK, here we go. And drag an arrow to be enabled. And now cinematic mode will turn on when that native. Now when you want it to end, because obviously at some point it needs to end, because the player needs to go back into control of the game, um, there's a couple ways you can do that, depending on what you what it is you're trying to accomplish with your cutscene. Now in this case, the matinee is going to keep playing after the point where I want the player to still have control, because the matinee also includes, remember, uh, oh. The matinee also includes this whole spaceship moving around and flying, but I want control to come back to the player right here where my cursor is, right right about the time it, it shoots the first rocket, so then the player can jump out of the way. So obviously we can't hook up the disable for the toggle cinematic mode to the completed of the matinee. That wouldn't make sense. So we've got to find another way to, to end it while the matinee is still going. So the way we solve that is to go into matinee and create a new director group. And you don't necessarily have to create this event in a director group. You can theoretically create it anywhere, but I think it makes more logical sense to make it in the director group. And because we also need this director group for other purposes. This is also what's going to allow us to switch between cameras, so may as well go ahead and make it now. So while you're in your director group, come up here and right click and add a new event track to your director group. 
And now, just drag the timeline to the time you want this event to occur, the event in this case being cutting off the, or toggling off the cinematic mode. Pull it right here to the very first rocket shoot, uh, rocket firing. Uh, hit enter to drop your keyframe and then name your event. I'm going to name mine cut, as in direct your cut. You can call it whatever you want. And of course, once again, if you don't like where it is, you can hold down control, left click, and drag it. Now, if we look back in Kismet, give it a little time, here we go. Now you have a new node coming out called cut. That's your event. Now all you have to do is connect the cut node, if it would let me, cut node, here we go, to the disable node in toggle cinematic mode. So, now we have cinematic mode, but we still need a camera. So, what we're going to do is go up to our content browser, go to actor classes, and camera actor is right here at the top. And you can just drag it right in. Now, if it doesn't come into a very ideal spot, a quick shortcut to get to where you are is the while it's selected, come up here and click this eyeball button that is uh, lock selected actors to camera. It basically makes you the eyes of the item that you have locked. Here, it's being a little slow. There we go. So now the camera, we are the eyes of the camera. And <laughs> what is going on here? Okay. <laughs> is going on in this viewport. Oh, I know what happened. Oh, that was an accident. Make sure that you don't have more than one thing selected when you're doing this, because I accidentally moved that static mesh. It's not crucial for what we're doing today, so I'm just going to delete it and get it out of there. <laughs> delete. Delete. Mm. Okay, well, whatever. We'll just leave it there. I don't know what it's doing. Here, let's try to move it down out of the way at least. There we go. Okay. So we got our camera. And the easiest way to set up a camera so that you know exactly what it's seeing and what it's looking at is to be the eyes of the camera yourself. So now we're in the eyes, and I'm going to move it to where I want it to start, which is right here when the player walks out of this door and they hit that trigger. So let's zoom forward. Here we go. Alright. So now we have the camera where we want. Go out of lock selected actors. And let's look at our camera. And while it's still selected, sticking out of the door there, right click in your matinee and do add new camera group. And we're going to name this one main cam. Now we have a camera group. And now to now we still need a way to tell the program to actually use this camera when the matinee starts. So that's what our director group is for. Up here, highlight the director track, bring the timeline back to the very beginning of the sequence, and hit enter to drop a keyframe. It's going to ask you what should you cut to. What camera, what point of view are we going to cut to? We're going to cut to our main cam. So just select that in the drop down and hit OK. And now we have the main cam. There's only one more problem though. The main cam keeps going past the point where we're supposed to have cut out of here and cut out uh, cinematic mode. So we need to make a cut in the main cam as well. So that's pretty easy to do. Just take your timeline over to exactly where the cut event was. Press enter again. And the way that you get out of the camera is to just go back to cut to group, director group. And basically all that does is just cut short the camera and freeze up the director group. Um, so now we have our camera, we have our cinematic mode set up, so now I'm going to wrap up this installment of the tutorial, and in the third installment we will look at how to actually animate this camera, and also add a second camera and switch between those two viewpoints.